Being good at pumping is the difference between being an okay rider and being a really good rider. The more speed you can make from the trail, the faster you're gonna be, obviously, but also probably the better you're gonna be at jumping. So let's take a look at how to pump. One of the best things about pumping is that it's relatively easy to learn. And if you're new to it, you've never done it before, try and find yourself something like a jumpy trail like this, a flow trail. Uh, it's good that a lot of trail centers, especially in the UK, have tracks like this. Or you'll even find specific pump tracks. Some towns and cities have them, some trail centers have them. If you've ever seen any BMX racing, you see those guys and girls on 20 inch wheels, everything's rock hard, tires are rock hard. They use pumping a lot. So once they're up to speed, they're making massive amount of speed from the back of jumps particularly. So bike setup does come into this. I'm riding my Mega 290 today. So it's my uh, big wheel bike, 29er. You just have a bit less space to move around on a 29er compared to a 26 or 27.5. So it does restrict your pumping just a little bit but you can still use it an awful lot. So the more you can move around on the bike, the more you can, and more effort you can put as you're pumping and the more speed you can get. Also things like pumping out your suspension can help you make a little bit of speed. That's why people like dirt jumpers, again, they use hardtails, but uh, slope style riders, they have their suspension rock hard for the heavy landings, but also to get more pump. So even locking out your rear shock can really help you get a bit more speed. So the most effective pumping, and therefore the fastest, is really working that rear wheel, getting your weight right over the back wheel, pumping it down hard. Puts you in that nice safe position as well, because you're so far back, you should be heeled down on the pedal. So again, when you move this on to using it on to more downhill tracks, you know, rougher, rootier stuff, then you're in a nice safe position because you're behind the bike, you're driving the bike forward over those obstacles. Again, if you're not used to moving around on your bike this much, then maybe practice that arc of movement I talk about in a different video. But get used to moving around a lot on the bike. It might feel alien if you're not used to it, but it really shouldn't go wrong. The only reason you'd ever lift the front wheel is if you get that timing really wrong and you do it way too late, so you're going into the next upslope. If you're coming down the back of this roller, you can get pretty much as far back on the bike as you want. The great thing about being really good at pumping as well is it'll make you a much smoother rider and you start riding the trail differently. So you start looking for places where you can make speed by pumping rather than pedaling. Because that also means you're gonna throw your weight around and I'm sure we've all done it. I've got the marks to show up with pedal. You can start clipping your pedals and obstacles and having big crashes. You can try and avoid that by using pumps instead. Using your weight is key to getting pumping really effectively. And I always think about my weight being my hips. And it's really trying to use my hips and my feet together to squash the bike into the floor. So it's quite simple if you think about it, it's rolling on the flat, standing nice and tall in that ready position, neutral, neutral position, whatever you want to call it. I'm just lowering myself down to the bike and really squashing in. It's gonna feel different doing this on a hard tail because obviously you're not squashing the rear shock like I am. Uh, but it's still the same technique and it'll work the same. In fact, it'll work better on nice transitions because everything you put in, you get out. Just it'll feel more firm, obviously. So down to the bike, trying to squash your tires into the ground. One of the best things about pumping when you're trying to learn it, and I think also why it makes it one of the easiest things to learn, is because when you do it right, it should feel really natural, and when you get it wrong, it won't. And basically that comes down to timing. If you just rode through this set of rollers, in the bottom of these dips, your tires and your suspension would squash anyway. So what you're trying to do is just exaggerate that squash, and that comes to getting that timing right. If you get it a bit wrong, it'll feel a bit wonky. As soon as you get it right, you'll feel that speed come. And that's just moving the, in the middle of the bike above your saddle. Now, if you move your hips behind the saddle, you've got a bit more space to move around. And that's where you'll really start to make that much more speed. And that's where you see the BMX racers really hanging off the back of their bike. You just get a more effective, faster pump if you're over the rear wheel. A common mistake with pumping, just the same as manually actually, is people trying to use their arms and using their handlebars to do all the work. 
and kind of like with manual as well, it will work a bit, like you can pull a bit of a manual using your arms and you can pump a bit using your arms, pushing the front wheel down to the ground. It's just not the most effective way of doing it. And also you're getting your weight onto the bar. So that's never a great spot to be. If you pump down here using your arms and then there's a root or something in the bottom there, you know, you can get towards going over the bars. And also if you're using your arms, you're really then only using your sort of, you know, upper body to pump and that's not all your weight. So if you bring it back, use your hips, you can really use your upper and lower body to put loads of weight through the bike. Yeah, I think pumping is really obvious on jumps and pump tracks, but when you take it to the more natural trails, is where it can make a massive difference to where you ride. So you can start looking for those transitions to pump. Like I said before, you can take out that risk of pedaling and catching your pedals. But if you can use pedaling and pumping, then you're gonna find the fastest way down the trail. So the back side of these routes is actually a really nice transition into the bottom. Or I'm thinking about maybe hopping this gap to take out the impact of me sort of slamming into that upslope and then getting a, a pump on the back of those routes over there. It's a bit tricky. It's quite a big gap today. It's a bit muddy, but I'll give it a go. And I reckon that'll be the fastest way of getting through this section. So a bunny hop and then a pump when I land. Right, well there's a few tips on how to pump. Uh, my piece of advice would definitely be try and find a pump track. There's probably one fairly local to you, I'd imagine. If you search them out, uh, you can really feel a difference. Once you get it, you'll feel yourself getting faster and faster, and then you can just translate it straight to every other trail. So. Give thumbs up if you like getting faster and smoother on your bike.